Hi everyone, it's Jerry. In this video, I'm going to share how Vladimir Kramnik violated Chess.com's fair play policy. This video is admittedly going to be more about why it's important to follow very basic rules rather than any chess analysis. Let's start first with one game. I'll just be skimming through it. It's from the 11th and final round of an early Title Tuesday event, which was held on October 17th, 2023. For those of you who may not be aware, uh, this is a money event, and it'll be revealed soon enough why I'm choosing this game to share with you in particular. So there's some things we need to know right out of the gates. Who's playing this game? Well, on the white end, it's Grandmaster Rodrigo Vasquez, whose account on chess.com, uh, his username is Castor. Castor is playing against Crocosia. Crocosia is uh, the account of Grandmaster Denis Kismetulin. Now, there's an issue here because right around the time of this Title Tuesday event, uh, Kismetulin was playing in an over the board event, in the Russian team championships. So, Kismetulin wasn't actually playing behind the Crocosia account here. Who was then? Well, it was Vladimir Kramnik. That's something you can't do. This is a violation of chess.com's fair play policy. You can't use someone else's account, especially in these money events. This is at minimum, uh, in this example here, this is at minimum deceptive to Rodrigo Vasquez, who thinks he's playing against Kismetulin. He's making decisions, maybe here, based on who he thinks he's playing. Sounds perfectly reasonable. Is it a good idea for Rodrigo Vasquez to play the Sicilian's Veshnikov against Kismetulin? Maybe. That might be a great idea. Is it a good idea for Rodrigo Vasquez to play the Sicilian's Veshnikov against Vladimir Kramnik, who's been a proponent of this opening since the 90s? That might be a terrible idea. You see what I'm getting at? Kramnik has an unfair advantage. Kramnik has good information. Rodrigo Vasquez has bad information. Let's continue. This game here inherent with this opening is the big hole on d5. You can see a lot of focus on that d5 square. White trying to control that point. Maintaining a piece always on d5. But really this whole board is lit up. King side, queen side, center, we see action all across the board here. Something you may also want to know here are the play styles of each player and the ratings of uh, each player. The players I'm referring to here are the ratings of Kramnik and Kismetul, and their ratings are very similar. But what is not similar between the two uh, are their play styles. In fact, I don't think you could really have a much greater difference with play styles, Kramnik and Kismetulin. Kismetulin is a very dynamic player. Kramnik, uh, I believe most would identify as a uh, fantastic strategic uh, player, one of the very best. So... The rating's similar, their play style's completely opposite, really. So, this does sharpen up. We have now this opened uh, G file towards the white king. White is successful maintaining this super strong knight on D5. White is doing fine right around here. Uh, it suggests at this stage for white to pick up the pawn. This is where white goes wrong with the h4 push, and Kramnik spots the very best move, knight h3. Followed up with knight takes f2, and the white king is, white king position is getting broken down. It's a winning position for black. Uh, it turns even for just a hair. After this move, it's considered an even position. There's a nice tactical shot for black here with rook to f2. Rook takes, and then queen takes queen. Okay, wasn't found here. Right around this stage, they were in basically bullet mode. So, 
just finishing up these last moves. After this check, king c1 is played. The draw here is to block with the queen, and then we end up some with some rook and pawn ending. White's currently down a couple pawns, but we'll soon pick up one. It's considered an even position, but we end up having the king move to c1. And just a few moves from now, we're going to see resignation by Rodrigo Vasquez after rook to g2. White threw in the towel. So there's some things I want to share here as a close. Uh, first of all, let's have a look at this fair play policy. And we could see here, this is the, the one point that Kramnik clearly is in violation of. Do not use anyone else's account. There's a reason that rule is in place. As mentioned, it is deceptive um, to, your, to your opponents. There's an unfair advantage there that Kramnik has. Additionally, uh, we can look at some words that Kramnik has shared, and these come from a, uh, the YouTube comment section to a video that is now out there. This is uh, something he has uh, said on this topic uh, regarding this use of another account. As an, what does he say here? As an experiment to collect data and test cheating methods on chess.com, I did indeed play several tournaments under the nickname Crocosia, which was chosen out of five accounts, suggested to me, da 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 da. I chose this one primarily because of the similarity of ratings and approximate playing strength on the platform. Uh, what else to note here? Uh, oh, he says, I immediately said that even if I accidentally earned a prize, I wouldn't claim it. Okay. In the tournaments I played, I didn't make it to the top five. The top five, I should point out, do get money. It runs 1,000, 750, 350, 200, 100. Okay. I get that he didn't earn any money by getting to the top five, but might it be the case that someone missed out on money because you defeated them in a deceptive way, we can say? Okay. He goes on to say, I received very useful information by playing under a different nickname, which I also use for building an anti cheating system. Okay. I don't see a problem with playing on this final line is really something. I don't see a problem playing under someone else's nickname if the chess player is comparable in strength to the account owner. Well, hopefully it helped to uh for you to understand why that actually is a problem. Uh so really whether you're just starting out with the game or a former world chess champion, I mean th it's it's an issue. That rule is in place for a reason. Simply don't play under somebody else's account. And finally, we could see the final standings as an example here of this early Title Tuesday event. Now, here were the top five winners, or the, the money earners. Krakosia, Kramnik in this case, finished seventh in this event, finished with nine points. And Castor finished with eight points. Uh, they played, as mentioned, this was an 11th round game. Uh, had Castor maybe had better information, maybe he would have won his final round game, would have put him at nine. Who knows really until this final, the final standings are set. Nobody really knows where these, uh, tie break numbers are going to land, but it's very realistic to think that somebody may have been, uh, cheated in a way out of some prize money because of this. Uh, because of Kramnik using someone else's account like this. So we don't know for sure. I mean, decisions like this have a butterfly effect. We don't know how influential they will be. Um, but anyhow, uh, feel free as usual to share what your thoughts are on all of this. Hope you got something out of this video and follow simple rules. Use your own account. Pretty simple. Anyhow, that's all for now. Take care. Bye.